one of the fundamental accounting assumptions that we make when we prepare our financial statements is the assumption of going concern. We assume that business of the company will continue in the foreseeable future. It just means that even if the accounting year is coming to an end, it does not mean that business activities will stop. It is not that I am finalizing my books on 31st March. So on 31st March, what I do is I stop doing my business. I prepare my financial statements. I get it uh, audited by the auditors. Then I get it approved by the board of directors. And once it is approved by the board of directors, then again, I resume my business activities. Obviously, that is not going to be so. Even if the accounting year is coming to an end, it does not mean that the business activities will come to a standstill. Business activities will continue. In other words, continuously events will be occurring after the balance sheet date or we can say after the reporting period. How should these events be considered when we are finalizing our financial statements? For example, let us say after the balance sheet date, a major event occurs. What should I do with that major event? Should I adjust the assets and liabilities which I have already reported in my balance sheet? Should I change the income and expenses which I have reported in my statement of profit and loss? Is it something that will affect my cash flow statement? Should I only provide a disclosure for the same or should I simply ignore it? What I am trying to say is that even if the year has come to an end, continuous business activities will be going on, continuously something or the other will keep on happening in the business. How are these events considered when we are finalizing our financial statements? That basically is the subject matter of end AS 10. If you see the title of end AS 10, it is events after the reporting period. There is no way in which you will not be reminded of accounting standard four. Let's be honest. The moment I read the title events after the reporting period, it will immediately make me recall accounting standard four. AS4 title is contingencies and events occurring after the balance sheet date. Our accounting standard four deals with contingencies. Uh, here, as you can see in India S10, there is no title of contingencies. Under the NDS system, contingencies are all covered by NDS 37 provisions, contingent liabilities and contingent assets. NDS 10 is covering only that other part which is covered by accounting standard 4. AS 4 also deals with events occurring after the balance sheet date. With this background, let's try to first introduce ourselves to what exactly do we mean by an event after the reporting period. Okay, now an event occurring after the reporting period can be a favorable event, can be an unfavorable event. Yes, favorable events can also be considered to be events after the reporting period. But then there has to be some date beyond which the NDS is no longer applicable. Because what happens is, think in this way, what happens is, that you are preparing your balance sheet, let us say on 31st March 2022, let's say you are preparing your balance sheet on 31st March 2022, and then some event is occurring, okay, some event is occurring on 5th April 2022, some event is occurring on 7th August 2022, uh, sorry, 7th August 2022, some event is occurring, let us say on 10th November 2023 you know someone will argue that my balance sheet date was 31st March 2022 that means every event that is happening over here is event after the reporting period isn't it that is the reason it is necessary for us to properly define an event after the reporting period hence we will like to know that what events will be covered and what events will not be covered by the end is if you see the definition now or the meaning of events after the reporting period, we say events after the reporting period are those events which are favorable and unfavorable that occur between, understand, end of the reporting period and end of the reporting period and the date when the financial statements are approved. 
See, there is a time lag. The year has come to an end does not mean immediately the financial statements will be approved. No, year will come to an end, then financial statements will be prepared by the management, then those financial statements will be audited. Those audited financial statements will be put before the board of directors and the board of directors approve them. Okay, that's what they say here that the financial statements are approved by board of directors in case of a company. If it is not a company, then by the corresponding approving authority in case of any other entity for issue. For example, if it is a partnership firm, then the partners are approving it. If it is a proprietary concern, the proprietor is signing it and we can say that it has been approved by the proprietor. Of course, because it is India, we will be dealing more with case of a company and hence we are interested in knowing that when will these financial statements be approved. Let us say over here, board of directors are approving the financial statements. Okay, board of directors are approving the financial statements on 7th May 2022. 7th May 2022. So just see, the year has ended on 31st March 2022 and the financial statements are approved on 7th May. Anything that is happening, right? Anything that is happening after 31st March 2022 to 7th May 2022 will be considered to be an event occurring after the reporting period. In our example, the event which is happening on 5th April 2022 will be an event occurring after the reporting period because it is happening after the balance sheet date but before the approval that we got of the board of directors. And this 7th August event that is happening, that is not an event occurring after the reporting date. Because this event is occurring after the approval of the board of directors. Once the board of directors have approved the financial statements, then this NDS is no longer applicable. This 10th November 2023 is definitely not an event occurring after the reporting period. Very quickly, what do you mean by an event occurring after the reporting period? It is an event, it can be a favorable event, it can even be an unfavorable event, which is occurring between the end of the reporting period and the date when the financial statements are approved. Okay, when can we say that the financial statements are approved? When it is approved by the board of directors in case of a company or any other competent authority for any other entity. Many times companies also have what is known as a supervisory board. You know, you have these directors, you have executive directors and then you have non-executive directors, you have independent directors, right? Now the board of directors are approving the financial statements and then they are sending the approved financial statements to the supervisory board. Now the supervisory board will also scrutinize that and then they will approve it. Now here a slight confusion can happen. The board of directors are approving and even the supervisory board is also approving. Then what will be considered to be the approval date? Can I say they are approved when the board of directors are approving it? Or can I say they are approved when the supervisory board is approving it? Remember, Supervisory board is comprising of non-executive directors, independent directors. Their role in a company is limited. The main role in the company will be of the board of directors. The date when the board of directors are approving the financial statement is the date of approval. Although the financial statements are subsequently approved by the supervisory board, the date on which the supervisory board are approving, that date should be ignored. Yeah, I would like you to attend this question on your own. You are supposed to decide the approval date. Okay. They are saying, what is the date of approval for issue of the financial statements prepared for the reporting period 1st April 2016 to 31st March 2017? Balance sheet date is 31st March 2017 in a situation where following dates are available. Five dates are given. Please decide which is the date of approval. What do you say? Which is the date of approval? The date on which the financial statements preparation is completed. The board reviews and approves for issue. 
available to shareholders annual general meeting or filed with the regulatory authority we are saying that event occurring after the reporting period is an event favorable unfavorable right which is occurring between the day on which you are preparing your financial statements right that is the end of the reporting period and the date when the financial statements are approved approved by whom the board of directors in other words 19th june 2017 is the approval date because this is the date on which the board reviews and approves for issue okay Again over here they are saying what is the date of approval for issue of the financial statements prepared for the reporting period 1st April 2021 to 31st March 2022 in a situation where following dates are available. Right, they are saying completion of preparation of financial statement board reviews and approves to the supervisory board, approver of supervisory board available to shareholders annual general meeting filed with regulatory authority. And then they are saying supervisory board is made up solely of non-executives and a representative of employees and other outside interests. Okay. The only confusion will be between these two dates because one is the date on which the board is approving it and the other is the date when the supervisory board is approving it. What should I consider? When the board is reviewing or the supervisory board is reviewing? Supervisory board's date will not be considered. The date that will be considered again is the date on which the board of directors are approving the financial statements. And as such also later on they have clarified that the supervisory board is simply of non-executives and representatives of employees. They do not have any role. I will not say any role. Any role will not be the right word. They do not have much role, right? They do not have a significant role in the affairs of the company day-to-day -day management of the company major decisions of the company everything is taken up by the board of directors yes at times they may have to get those decisions passed by the supervisory board that is another issue but the main decision making power is not with the supervisory board supervisory board will only consider the matters which are referred to it right so how should the entire business be conducted the strategy will be designed by the board of directors and then the pros and cons of that strategy that can be further discussed in the supervisory board. Hence, we will ignore the date on which the supervisory board is approving the financial statements. What matters to us is the date on which the financial statements are approved by the board. Hence, in our example, it is 18th May 2022. You know what that does mean? 18th May 2022. I'm getting two dates over here. 31st March 2022 and 18th May 2022, right? And this is the in-between period, okay? To this, NDS 10 is applicable. NDS 10 is applicable to those events that will occur between the date of the end of the reporting period and the date on which the financial statements are approved. Events after the reporting period are those events favorable or unfavorable that are occurring between the end of the reporting period and the date on which financial statements are approved either by board of directors in case of a company or a corresponding approving authority in any other case. Now that's the meaning of events after the reporting period i know that i have been able to identify that yes this is an event which is after the reporting period the next question that arises is what shall be its treatment how am i supposed to provide treatment for events after the reporting period in ds10 is segregating events after the reporting period into two categories adjusting event and non-adjusting event if you say it is an adjusting event, it means your financial statements will be restated. If the event is affecting your balance sheet, your balance sheet will be altered. If the event is affecting your statement of profit and loss, 
your statement in profit and loss figures of income expenses will be changed and of course it will then have corresponding effect on the assets and liabilities or even the balances of equity that is what we understand as an adjusting event remember if it's an adjusting event you will have to restate your financial statements it can even turn out to be a non-adjusting event if the non-adjusting event is a material event a disclosure should be provided in notes to the financial statements at times the event can be a routine event if it is a routine event then simply ignore the same that means in terms of NDS 10 I will have to distinguish between events after the reporting period which are adjusting in nature and which are non adjusting in nature now how will I do this segregation how will i identify whether the event is adjusting or non-adjusting okay once the event has occurred after the reporting period you should simply ask yourself is this event providing you with further information about facts and circumstances which were prevailing on the reporting date if the answer is yes it is adjusting if your answer is no it is non-adjusting Again, again, I'll repeat, event will happen after the end of the reporting period. Okay, once the event has occurred, ask yourself, because of this event, are you getting more clarity about the circumstances which were prevailing on the reporting date? By reporting date, I mean the balance sheet date. On the balance sheet date, are you getting better information about it? If your answer is yes, then it is adjusting if your answer is no, then it is non-adjusting. Okay, let me make things even more simpler. Okay, let us change the question slightly now. Let us put it in this way. That the event is occurring after the reporting date, but the circumstances which led to that event were those circumstances prevailing on the reporting date. Put the question in this particular manner. See, event is occurring after the reporting date but what are the circumstances which eventually resulted into that event were those circumstances prevailing on the reporting date prevailing on the balance sheet date if your answer is yes then it is adjusting event if your answer is no then it is a new development consider that to be non-adjusting event right let us take some examples and it will become clear Let us say our reporting date is 31st March 2022. You are preparing your balance sheet, you are preparing your statement of profit and loss, your cash flow statement, everything for the year ended 31st March 2022. Of course, the balance sheet will be as on 31st March 2022. Okay, now. On 5th April 2022, datas of rupees 5 lakhs declared insolvent. That's it. The balance sheet that you have prepared on 31st March 2022, in that balance sheet, of course, you will be showing datas as a part of your trade receivables. Okay. Now on 5th April 2022, 5 lakhs worth of data has been declared insolvent. So there was some party to whom you were supposed to recover 5 lakhs from. You were showing that party as a data in your balance sheet. The total amount of data may be much huge compared to 5 lakhs. But there seems to be some data of rupees 5 lakhs who has declared himself or herself to be insolvent. Now this is happening on 5th April while your balance sheet date or the reporting date is 31st March. It is very natural that the year ended on 31st March and the event is occurring on 5th April. The financial statements would not be approved by this particular date. Okay, now what to do with this? The datas of 5 lakhs have become insolvent. That means I will not be able to collect 5 lakhs of rupees. Don't you feel you should recognize a provision for bad and doubtful debts? Or should I only provide a disclosure with respect to the same? Understand? If you say I will recognize a provision for bad and doubtful debts, or if you are saying I will write off the data itself, see, 
if you recognize the provision for bad and doubtful debts, you will have to make an adjustment in your PNL. If you say I will write off the debtors, you'll have to make an adjustment in your balance sheet. And of course, the moment you will make adjustment in balance sheet, PNL will also get affected. When PNL will get affected, the balance sheet will also get affected. It is very natural. Both of the uh, both of the statements are definitely interlinked. That means you are restating the financial statements. If you are restating the financial statements, it means you are considering this event to be adjusting event. Or what you can do is you will not disturb the datas on 31st March 2022. But yes, you will provide a disclosure in the financial statement that see, datas of 5 lakhs have become insolvent and we may not be able to collect anything from those datas. I'm providing only a disclosure. If you are providing only a disclosure, that means you are treating this as non-adjusting event. That's what I want to learn now. Is this event of the data declaring itself to be insolvent? Should I consider this as adjusting event? Should I consider this as non-adjusting event? Okay, how will you do this? Yes, ask the question. What is the question that we are supposed to ask? Okay, this is what I am referring to. The question that you should ask is, were the circumstances that led to the event existing on the reporting date? Okay. You are saying that datas of 5 lakhs have become insolvent. Let us say you are receiving this news that so and so party has declared himself to be insolvent. Will you not like to know that why this thing has happened? See, a data has become insolvent. Now, this is not a very regular feature, right? Someone is declaring himself or herself to be bankrupt. You cannot consider this to be a regular event. I will like to know. Right, I would like to know that why has this data declared itself to be insolvent? What did really go wrong? Right, what did really go wrong? That the data had to declare itself to be insolvent. Okay, so one of my data has declared himself to be insolvent. I really want to know that why this thing has really happened. And that's the reason. Now I am obtaining more information. I want to know a little bit more that why does this thing really happened? Okay. Now we are talking about this data, okay. Now this data had a factory and this factory got destroyed in earthquake. Okay, this factory got destroyed on earthquake on 2nd February 2022. The data was doing its business, uh, whatever, uh, goods that the data was manufacturing was manufactured in this particular factory there was a major earthquake and the factory has got destroyed of course uh, the earthquake made news also you might have read it in the newspaper you might have watched it somewhere but you know when the earthquake has happened at some distant place it is only a news piece for you if it has not affected you you are not really uh, what you can say doing too much of scrutiny about it you are aware that some earthquake had happened you agree you also know that there was a lot uh, there was a lot of destruction because of the earthquake that also you know but then business keeps on happening right and you will read that particular uh, news it will definitely affect you for a few seconds few minutes right and then again you are into your business activities but now you realize that this earthquake destroyed the entire factory of the data and because of that reason, the data had to declare itself to be insolvent. Okay, tell me. The data has become insolvent on 5th April. Okay, the data declared itself to be insolvent on 5th April. But were the circumstances that led to the bankruptcy, were the circumstances that led to the insolvency existing on the reporting date? When did the earthquake occur? The earthquake occurred on 2nd February 2022. We were not knowing on 31st March 2022 that the earthquake has destroyed the factory of the data, but the data was aware. The data knows that its factory has been destroyed. The data is now trying its level best to revive its business. But when every option failed, when every alternative failed, the data had no choice but to declare itself to be insolvent.
right the act of insolvency happened on 5th april but the reason of that was on 2nd february the circumstances that led to the eventual bankruptcy of the data were prevailing on the reporting date you were not knowing but the data was knowing and the event on 5th april has provided information about facts and circumstances which were prevailing on the reporting date please consider this as an adjusting event again ask yourself that same question were the circumstances that led to the insolvency of data prevailing on the reporting date the answer is yes because the circumstances that led to the bankruptcy were the earthquake on 2nd february 2nd february 2022 is before the reporting date that means on the reporting date the circumstances which led to the insolvency were there i will treat this as an adjusting event you may either write off the data of 5 lakhs or you may recognize a provision for bad and doubtful debts of 5 lakhs that is for you to decide but this is an event that will definitely affect my financial statement i will say it is an adjusting event and accordingly the financial statement shall be restated right let's take a similar situation again similar situation reporting date let's say is 31st march 2022 on 10th may 2022 data of rupees 5 lakhs declares insolvent reporting data is 31st march 2022 on 10th may 2022 you are getting information that one data which you are showing in your balance sheet at 5 lakhs of rupees has declared itself to be insolvent i will again like to know that why this <clears throat> insolvency has been declared by the data again the reason is the same this data owned a factory and this factory is destroyed okay this factory is destroyed by earthquake right i'm just continuing with the facts of the earlier illustration that we were discussing destroyed by earthquake on 8th april 2022 i'm just making a slight change in the earlier case the earthquake was occurring before the balance sheet date this time the earthquake is occurring after the balance sheet date and just see your entire conclusion will change just assume for a moment that the financial statements are still not approved by the board of directors okay please consider that thing in mind it is already 10th may but still the financial statements are not approved okay because the financial statements are still not approved the event that is occurring on 10th may 2022 is an event after the reporting period and it is a subject matter of nds 10 i will have to identify the nature of this event is it adjusting or not adjusting my data has declared itself to be insolvent i really want to know why this thing happened and my scrutiny reveals that and there was an earthquake which destroyed the entire factory but that happened on 8th april 2022 ask yourself that same question what's the question ask yourself what's the question were the circumstances that led to the event existing on reporting date <coughs> tell me what were the circumstances that led to the insolvency earthquake which destroyed the factory was that existing on the reporting date no the earthquake did not happen before or on the reporting date the earthquake has ha has occurred after the reporting date the circumstances that are leading to the insolvency were not prevailing on the reporting date and that's the reason this event will be treated as non-adjusting event but it's a major event and because it's a major event you should provide a disclosure where will you provide the disclosure you will provide disclosure to the notes you will provide disclosure in notes to the financial statements right let's say your reporting date is 
31st March 2022. On this date, you have recognized a provision. You are saying provision for damages payable. You are recognizing a provision, let us say, of 5 lakhs of rupees. The time when you are preparing your financial statements, one of your customer has taken you to court, right? That customer has filed a suit against you and is claiming certain amount of damages. Your lawyers are advising you that, see, you may lose this particular case and you may have to pay around 5 lakhs of rupees. Applying NDS 37, I have recognized a provision of 5 lakhs of rupees. Okay, now. On 16th April 2022, court orders to pay rupees 5 lakh 50,000. Right. Understand the whole thing. You have recognized a provision of 5 lakhs of rupees. On 16th April, the verdict of the court is out and the court is directing us to pay to the aggrieved party 5 lakh 50,000. Now, you have recognized a provision of 5 lakhs. But I will have to pay 5,50,000. Should I change the provision on the balance sheet date? Or on the balance sheet date, what I have provided of 5 lakhs is sufficient enough. And I can simply provide a disclosure that see, extra 50,000 will be payable. If you are changing the amount of provision, that means you are treating this event as adjusting. If you are leaving the provision as it is and providing a disclosure, that means you are treating it as a non adjusting event. What will be the right treatment over here? Should I treat this as adjusting or non-adjusting? Come on, you very well know what is to be done. This is the question that you should again ask. You know, every time put this particular question and you will get the direction in which you should be answering the question. Don't try to solve questions intuitionally. You know, whatever first thought comes to your mind, yes, that is my answer. Don't really do it. Do it logically. Were the circumstances that led to the event existing on the reporting date? Okay, were you knowing on the reporting date that you have a pending lawsuit? Were you knowing that? Answer is yes. Your lawyers advised you that you may have to pay 5 lakhs. But see, this is an accounting estimate at best. I have estimated 5 lakhs will be payable. And hence I have recognized a provision for 5 lakhs. Now the event is the judgment of the court and finally I realize that it's not 5 lakhs I have to pay 5 lakh 50,000 okay we should treat this as what do you say we should treat this as an adjusting event isn't it the court judgment is out on 16th April 2022 but the circumstances that have led to the eventual judgment were existing on the reporting date what I will do is I will Change the provision from 5 lakhs to 5 lakh 50,000. Extra 50,000 will be debited to the profit and loss account. My profit will reduce or the loss will increase by 50,000 rupees. Accordingly, my in my balance sheet, the provision will also change from 5 lakhs to 5 lakh 50. Okay. It can even be the other way around also. The court is ordering me to pay 4 lakhs of rupees. You have recognized, let's take the original figure now, you had recognized a provision for 5 lakhs. Finally, on 16th April 2022, the court order is out and the court is saying that you will have to pay 4 lakhs to the aggrieved party. Am I allowed to reduce the provision by 1 lakh? You are allowed, provided this is an adjusting event. Okay. Were the circumstances existing on the reporting date? The event is... The court judgment is out. Were the circumstances prevailing on the reporting date? Yes. On the reporting date, 31st March 2022, I know, I knew that there is a pending lawsuit for which, based on my lawyer's advice, I have recognized a provision of 5 lakhs. But now I am supposed to pay only 4 lakhs. I have over provided 1 lakh. I am allowed to reduce the amount of the provision. Please remember, events after the reporting period are not simply unfavorable events. They can even be favorable events also. It's even possible over here that the court is ordering in our favor. The court is saying that you are not supposed to pay anything at all. Then perhaps the entire 5 lakhs will be required to be reversed. Getting it? 
So events after the reporting period are not necessarily only, uh, say, unfavorable events. It can even be a favorable event. And as you can see here, I need to make a necessary change in the amount of the provision. But yes, if this case was filed after the balance sheet date, then matters will be different. Here on the balance sheet date, on the reporting date, there was a pending lawsuit. And that is the reason we are saying that the circumstances were prevailing on the reporting date. But if the aggrieved party is taking me to court after the reporting period, and then the court is giving some kind of a judgment, then all these things are happening after the reporting period. The circumstances which will lead to the eventual judgment were not prevailing on the balance sheet date. And because they were not prevailing on the reporting date, I will treat it as non-adjusting. Yes, whatever amount of damages that I am supposed to pay, this is a material event, I should provide a necessary disclosure for the same. But I will not restate my financial statement. Let's check one final example. Reporting date is 31st March 2022. On 8th April 2022, fire breaks out. Okay. And destroys the go down. Losses of rupees. 4 lakhs after insurance claim okay let's put it in this way i am preparing my financial statements and my reporting date is 31st march 2022 8th april 2022 a fire has broken out it has destroyed my entire go down but yes i had taken insurance and uh, and, and I'm communicating with the insurance company and my insurance agent and all and I realize that in spite of the insurance there will still be a loss of around 4 lakhs of rupees. It's very natural. You are not going to get the full claim, right? Most of the times we don't get the full claim and that's the reason I will suffer a loss of 4 lakhs of rupees. Should I consider this as adjusting event? Should I consider this as non-adjusting event? What do you say? Adjusting? If you say adjusting, then I will have to make necessary provisions in my financial statements. If you say it is non-adjusting, a fire breaking out is definitely a material event. I need to provide a disclosure for the same. Fire has destroyed your entire go down. Should I treat it as an adjusting event or simply a disclosure will be sufficient? What do you say? I'll take you back to that question only. Okay. <laughs> this question will only decide your treatment. Okay. What's the question? Were the circumstances that led to the event existing on reporting date? Tell me, what is the event? The event is that fire breaks out. Were the circumstances that led to the breakout of fire existing on the reporting date? Basically, you are asking yourself, were you knowing on 31st March 2022 that see, on 8th April 2022, a fire will break out in our company and the go down will get destroyed. Were you knowing this? You know, if you say, yes, I was knowing, then obviously the next question will be that why you did not stop the fire from happening in the first place, isn't it? So we will have to treat this as non-adjusting event. Come on. The circumstances of the fire breaking out on 8th April obviously were not prevailing on 31st March. This is a new development. Treat it as a non-adjusting event. I agree it's a major event and hence you should provide a disclosure in the financial statement. Getting it? Now, one more thing. One more thing. Fire breaks out and destroys the entire unit entire unit okay now just understand we are just changing the whole thing in a and putting in a very different way fire is breaking out 
and it is destroying the entire industrial unit. You have this entire factory unit, factory shed, whatever, plant and machinery go down, furniture, building, whatever was there, everything has been destroyed. It's a major fire that has occurred. You may have insurance and all fine, but it's a major fire which has destroyed your entire factory. And it has destroyed in such a way, you know, it has destroyed in such a way that going concern, going concern assumption, going concern assumption is no longer valid. You know, the company comes to the conclusion that the destruction is so major that perhaps now continuing the business itself is not possible. Right, we were taking the earlier example, right? We are just uh, we are just changing the facts and circumstances over here. In one of the earlier example, we were saying that the data owned a factory and the factory was destroyed by the earthquake and the data declared itself to be insolvent. You know, something similar to that over here. We are not declaring ourselves insolvent, but something similar over here. The fire was so major that my entire business has been ruined. Now I am of the view that I have no other alternative except for closing down the entire business then the going concern assumption is no longer valid see this event will still remain a non-adjusting event only but now simply providing disclosure will be insufficient going concern assumption is a fundamental assumption that we make under end as1 that fundamental assumption itself is no longer applicable hence this time simply adjusting the assets and liabilities and income and expenses will not be sufficient you will have to change the entire basis of your preparation of financial statements and accordingly the financial statements will be restated getting it so although i am saying it is a non-adjusting event but it will turn out to be an exception you will have to make adjustments in your financial statements not because this is an adjusting event you will have to make adjustments in your financial statements because going concern assumption is no longer applicable. Because this assumption is no longer applicable, accordingly the financial statements have to be prepared. Readers of the financial statements should be able to understand that this is perhaps the last financial statements of this company. Because going concern, that is whether the business will continue in the future, perhaps is no longer possible if you just go through the note that we have this was the question that we were continuously putting before ourselves and in every question that you will solve this is what you will ask yourself uh, what are the circumstances that lead to the event existing on the reporting date if your answer is yes then it is adjusting event as you can see here it's an adjusting event you'll have to restate the financial statements if your answer is no it is non-adjusting event it is a new development if it is material you should provide a disclosure in notes to financial statements if it is immaterial or routine you should ignore the same for example in the month of april i am paying salary in the month of may i am paying salary my financial statements are still not approved come on Financial statements are not approved and on and in May, for example, in May, I'm paying salary for April. This is definitely an event after the reporting period, but it is an immaterial or we can say routine. It's a routine transaction. There is no need for me to provide a disclosure. I will not write as a part of my disclosure that in the month of May, we have paid salary of April. Obviously, it is understood that you will be paying the salary. After all, the business is continuing, isn't it? This was the final point that we really discussed as a part of a note. Event after the reporting period should not be so major that the principle of going concern is no longer valid, right? Understand, if the going concern assumption is no longer appropriate, India S10 requires a fundamental change in the basis of accounting rather than an adjustment to the amounts recognized within the original basis of accounting. A major fire has occurred, perhaps now you have no logical conclusion left other than going for liquidation of your business, liquidation of your company. Accordingly, now the financial statement should be prepared, right? So they are saying that you will have to change the basis of your accounting. You may prepare, right? One of the changes which is possible is you can prepare your financial statements now on liquidation basis, okay? And this fact should also be disclosed. 
going concern is a fundamental accounting assumption fundamental accounting assumption means i am not supposed to disclose this assumption but because now going concern assumption is no longer applicable this fact should be disclosed as per in as1 and finally before we wrap up this particular discussion one more note you know you can say that this is what we can say this is note 1 and this is note 2 you can do it something like this remember if you are preparing interim financial report that will be done actually as per int as 34 if you are preparing interim financial report even to interim financial report also int as 10 is applicable by interim financial report i mean a report which is for a period shorter than full accounting year for example you are preparing some quarterly results and you are sharing this quarterly results with your shareholders then even to those quarterly results also ndas 10 is applicable suggest treatment for following events after the reporting period assume in each situation that books are under process of finalization and hence not as yet approved by the board Okay. ABC Limited prepared interim financial report for the quarter ending 30th June 2021. The interim financial report was approved for issue by the board of directors on 15 July 2021. Whether events occurring between the end of the interim financial report and date of approval by the board of directors, that is events between 1st July 2021 and July 15, 2021, that provide evidence of conditions that existed at the end of the reporting interim reporting period shall be adjusted in the interim financial report ending 30th June 2021. They are giving us a reference to interim financial reports. Interim financial reports are prepared as per India's 34. An interim financial report is basically a report for a period shorter than the full accounting year. But remember one thing, and this is something that we had discussed. NDS 10 is also applicable to interim financial report. An interim financial report will be also ultimately approved by the board of directors. Hence, the date on which you have prepared the interim financial report and the date of approval. Between these two dates, if any events are occurring, they will be a subject matter of NDS 10. Applying NDS 10, you will have to decide whether those events are adjusting, non-adjusting. If they're adjusting events, you will have to restate even an interim financial report. If it is non-adjusting, then you will have to provide a disclosure for the same. If you see the response, they are saying an entity describing that its interim financial report is in compliance with NDS has to comply with all the NDS, including NDS 10. Okay. In order to comply with the requirements of NDS 10, each interim financial report should be adjusted for adjusting events occurring between the end of the interim financial report and the date of approval by the board of directors therefore in the instant case events occurring between 1st july 2021 and 15 july 2021 that provide evidence of conditions that existed at the end of the interim reporting period should be adjusted in the interim financial report ending june 30 2021 Basically, the point to be remembered is that it is not that NDS 10 will be applicable only to annual reports. NDS 10 will also be applicable to interim financial reports. That will be a better way of remembering this case. Okay. Let's check with B. The board of directors of ABC Limited approved the financial statements for reporting period 2021-22 for issue on 15th June 2022. The management of ABC Limited discovered a major fraud and decided to reopen the books of account. The financial statements were subsequently approved by the board of directors on 30th June 2022. What is the date of approval for issue as per India 10 in the given case? Okay. What has happened is that we are having two dates of approval this time. First, the board of directors are approving it on 15 June 2022. Then they are discovering a major fraud. They are reopening the books and again they are approving it on 30th June 2022. 
what will be considered to be the date of approval obviously the date of approval will be the final date of approval isn't it you approved on 15 june but then you reopened the books if the books are reopened they have to again be finalized and again they have to be approved hence the subsequent date the later date of approval will be considered to be the final date of approval that will turn out to be 30th june if we just go through the response they say in the given case there are two dates of approval by board of directors the financial statements were reopened for further adjustments subsequent to the initial approval the date of approval should be taken as the date on which financial statements are finally approved by the board of directors therefore in the given case the date of approval for issue as per india stand should be 30th june 2022 A case is going on between ABC Limited and GST department on claiming some exemption for the year 2021-2022. The court has issued the order on 15th April 2022 and rejected the claim of the company. Accordingly, the company is liable to pay the additional tax. The financial statements of the company for the year 2021-22 have been approved on 15th May 2022. Should the company account for such tax in the year 2021-22 or should it account for the same in the year 2022-23? Okay, they are basically giving us a reference of 2021-22. That means your balance sheet date is 31st March 2022. Okay, and on 15th April, 15th April 2022, uh, the court is rejecting the claim and the financial statements are getting approved on 15th may 2022 that means this event which is happening on 15th april 2022 is between the end of the reporting period and the date on which the financial statements are approved in other words it's an event after the reporting period i have to decide whether this event is adjusting or non-adjusting what do you say the court has issued the order on 15th April. Whether it is adjusting or non-adjusting, this is the note that you have to really consider. And this is the all important question that you should be asking yourself. Were the circumstances that led to the event existing on the reporting date? What is the event? Court has given judgment on 15th April 2022 were the circumstances of this particular event existing on the reporting date obviously on the reporting date you were aware that there is a case going on uh, you were aware that a case was going on uh, with the gst department that means the circumstances were there and now it has been confirmed that you have lost this particular case what do you say adjusting event isn't it? It will turn out to be an adjusting event. Uh, whatever, uh, say, whatever amount is now payable, you need to recognize an appropriate provision for the same. Let's see the response they are saying. An event after the reporting period is an adjusting event if it provides evidence of a condition existing at the end of the reporting period here the condition is satisfied court order received after the reporting period provides evidence of the liability existing at the end of the reporting period therefore the event will be considered as an adjusting event and accordingly the amounts will be adjusted in the financial statements and it will be done in the current year itself 2021-22 Yeah, something similar to the earlier case. They are saying ABC Limited is in a legal suit with GST department. Company gets a court order in its favor. Okay, gets an order in its favor on 15th April 2022, which results into reducing the tax liability as on 31st March 2022. 
The financial statements for 2021-2022 were approved by the Board of Directors on 15th May 2022. 31st March 2022 is your reporting date. Event is happening on 15th April 2022. You are finalizing on 15th May 2022. This is definitely an event after the reporting period, isn't it? Is it adjusting? Is it non adjusting? That is the question. Now, a legal suit with the GST department was going on. So, if I just continue with the logic of the earlier case, it means we will have to treat this as an adjusting event. But now what they say, they say the management has not considered the effect of the transaction as the event is favorable to the company. The company's view is that favorable events after the reporting period should not be considered as it would hamper the realization concept of accounting. Comment in the light of India's 10. They are saying this is an adjusting event, right? They are themselves agreeing it's an adjusting event, but because it is favorable, they have not given effect for the same. When you look into the meaning of event after the reporting period, they have made it very clear in India's 10, events after the reporting period are those events favorable and unfavorable, right? The words are used. If I just take you here, the meaning that we had discussed earlier, right? They say favorable and unfavorable. Even favorable events can also be events after the reporting period. What is more important is not favorable and unfavorable. What is more important is adjusting and non-adjusting. This is an adjusting event. Even though it is favorable, so what? Its effect needs to be given. Financial statements need to be restated and that too for the current year, okay? 2021-22. As per India's 10, even favorable events need to be considered. What is important is whether a condition exists as at the end of the reporting period and there is evidence for the same. Therefore, the event will be considered as an adjusting event and accordingly the amounts will be adjusted in financial statements for the year 2021-22. Yes, we have an interesting case now. I really like to know how you respond to it. It says a company has inventory of 100 finished cars as on 31st March 2022, which are having a cost of rupees 4 lakhs each. On 30th April 2022, as per new government rules, higher road tax and penalties are to be paid by the buyers for such cars, which were already expected to come. And hence the selling price of a car has come down and the demand for such cars has dropped drastically. Selling price is down to rupees 3 lakhs each. Financial statements of the company for the year 2021-22 are not yet approved. Should the company value its stock at rupees 4 lakhs each or should it value at rupees 3 lakhs each? Ignore the cost necessary to make the sale. Okay. On 31st March 2022, you will have to carry out your valuation of inventory, right? We will carry out the valuation of inventory. And we know it very well. Inventory valuation will be lower of cost or NRV, isn't it? This is how we are carrying out the valuation of inventory. Of course, the valuation is the subject matter of NDS too. Now, what has happened is, on 31st March 2022, your cars were having a cost of rupees 4 lakhs. Now, normally what will happen is you are expecting to sell the car. And if you're expecting to sell the car, normally we will expect to sell at a price higher than the cost. So although they have not given us any information about the NRV, but I'm assuming that on 31st March 2022, the inventory of cars must have been measured at cost. See, when you are doing business, when will business be profitable? Business will be profitable only when you can sell the inventory at a price higher than the cost. Basically, we will always assume that the cost and NRV, when I'll compare the two, cost will turn out to be lower. Hence, I'm assuming that on 31st March 2022, inventory must have been valued at cost of rupees 4 lakhs each per car. Now on 30th April, understand the timeline also. 
31st March 2022 and now on 30th April 2022 an event has occurred. What's the event? Government has announced some new rules. As per these new rules, any person who is buying the car will have to pay a high road tax and will also will be able uh, and also will be required to pay penalties. They are saying higher road tax and penalties are to be paid by the buyers for such cars. Now higher road tax is payable, penalties are payable. What this has done is this has dented the demand for cars. For example, I, I want to buy a new car and I'm planning, maybe I'm, I'm seeing, you know, I'm, uh, what I'm doing is I'm visiting different dealers, I'm seeing different models and I have still not made up my mind that which car I will buy. But yes, I am basically scouting for, basically moving around different dealers, looking at different models. And all of a sudden on 30th April, the government says that, hey, you want to buy a car? You'll have to pay a higher road tax. You'll have to pay certain penalties also. Now, what has happened because of this is, as a buyer, I will be now discouraged from buying that particular car because I'll have to pay for the car and over and above that, I will also will have to pay this higher road taxes and all. Because of this, the demand of car has reduced. And because the car demand has reduced, now that same car which you were going to sell at a particular price, which we don't know, but you will be forced to sell that car at 3 lakhs of rupees. 4 lakhs or 3 lakhs, whichever is lower. Obviously, 3 lakhs is lower. Question is, you have to do inventory valuation on 31st March 2022. Should you value inventory at cost of 4 lakhs or at the NRV of 3 lakhs? Is this event which is happening on 30th April 2022 adjusting event? If you say it is an adjusting event, then the inventory of cars should be valued at 3 lakhs of rupees. If you say it is non-adjusting, then the inventory will be continued to be valued at 4 lakhs rupees as we have already done. <coughs> that is the question. Is this notification of new government rules on 30th April 2022, that is after the reporting date, but before the approval of the financial statements, adjusting event or non-adjusting event? This is what we want to really understand. Okay, what's the question that we should be asking ourselves? Were the circumstances that led to the event existing on the reporting date? That's the question uh, uh, that we should be asking ourselves over here. What's the event over here? New government rules have been notified. Okay, new government rules were notified. Now, if you look at the entire case, they haven't really given us any information that whether on 31st March 2022, we were aware whether new rules are going to be notified or not. But normally, if you'll see the way the rules are notified, rules are not notified all of a sudden. You know, if you are of the view that out of the blue on 30th April, the government is unveiling some new taxes and all, normally that does not happen. Normally that does not happen. Most of the times proposals will be drawn up. Then these proposals will be sent to different stakeholders. Their views will be taken. The government may accept those views, may not accept the views. That is another thing. See, this is all discretionary. It is within the power of the government to agree or disagree. But consultation process normally is done. It is better to believe over here that yes, the circumstances were definitely there. That's one thing. Second. NRV at the end of the day is an accounting estimate. On 31st March 2022, when you must have calculated the cost or NRV, definitely you must have calculated the NRV. But NRV, as I said, is an accounting estimate. As better information is available, you have to then change the accounting estimate. What has happened is, after the balance sheet date, we are getting better evidence of what is the net realizable value. And because we are getting better evidence of what the NRV shall be, we should consider this as an adjusting event. Inventory valuation should be revisited. Inventory which you have valued at cost of 4 lakhs of rupees should be now considered at 3 lakhs of rupees.
Let's look at the response given. They are saying events after the reporting period provide the evidence about the net realizable value of the car at the end of the reporting period. And therefore, the amount of rupees 3 lakh should be considered for the valuation of stock. Ideally, I should have determined the NRV on 31st March, but perhaps I was not having proper information on 31st March. Proper information is now available and hence I will use it to estimate what shall be the NRV. ABC Limited has purchased a new machinery during the year 2021-22. The asset was finally installed and made ready for use on 15th March 2022. Okay. However, the company involved in installation and training, which was also the supplier, has not yet submitted the final bills for the sale. The supplier company sent the bills on 10th April 2022 when the financial statements were not yet approved. Should the company adjust the amount of capitalization in the year 2021-22 or in the year 2022-23? I believe this is a very simple case. You purchase the machinery during the year. On 15th March 2022, it has been installed and it is now ready for its use also. You have started using it also. But you have still not received the final bill. We know that installation expenses have to be capitalized. But what is the installation charge? That we still do not know. On 10th April, we are receiving the final bill and now the installation expense has been confirmed. Were the circumstances that led to the event existing on the reporting date? The answer is very much yes. What do you say? What is the event that you received the final bill in which you will come to know what are the installation expenses? Were the circumstances of installation existing on the reporting date? Obviously, the answer is yes. This is an adjusting event. Uh, whatever are the installation expenses, I will capitalize to the cost of the PPE and I will do it in the year 2021-22. As per the provisions of the contract, the cost of installation and training of new machine is an integral part of the cost of the asset purchased. Therefore, even if the details are available after the reporting period, they provide proof about the circumstances that existed at the end of the reporting period. Therefore, the cost of installation and training will be considered for capitalization in the year 2021-22. Suggest treatment for following events after the reporting period. In A, they are saying, Company XYZ Limited was formed to secure tenders floated by a telecom company for publication of telecom directors. It backed the tender for publishing directors for Pune Circle for five years. It has made a profit in 2021, 22, 22, 23, 23, 24, and 24, 25. It bid in tenders for publication of directors for other circles, Nagpur, Nasik, Mumbai, Hyderabad. But as per the results declared on 23rd April 2025, the company failed to bag any of these. Its only activity till date is publication of the Pune directory. The contract for publication of directors for Pune will expire on 31st December 2025. The financial statements for the financial year 2024-25 have been approved by the board of directors on 10th July 2025. Whether it is appropriate to prepare financial statements on going concern basis. This was one of the note that we had considered when we discussed the treatment of events after the reporting period. The events after the reporting period should not be so major that the principle of going concern is no longer valid. If the going concern assumption is invalidated, then you will have to make an appropriate change in the basis on which you are preparing your financial statements. Now, simply adjusting assets and liabilities here and there will not be sufficient. Not only that, a proper disclosure should also be inserted in your notes as per NDS 1 that the going concern assumption is no longer valid. You know what has happened over here? You have won the tender for publishing directors for Pune Circle for five years. 
In other words, for five years, you have an operating activity. You can print these directories. You can sell that in the Pune circle. And they are saying that this business has been very profitable. Now you have bid for a lot many other circles, but you did not win any of those. You did not win any of those circles. The only activity that you have right now is printing the Pune directory and that too will expire on 31st December 2025. After that, you do not see any business activity as far as printing of telecom directories is considered. Do you have any other business plan? If yes, then maybe using that you may still prepare it on going concern basis. But in absence of that, the going concern assumption is no longer valid. My response will basically be around that. In the instant case, since the contract is expiring on 31st December 2025 and it is confirmed on 23rd April 2025, that is after the end of the reporting period, before the approval of the financial statements, that no further contract is secured. This implies that the entity's operations are expected to come to an end. Accordingly, if entity's operations are expected to come to an end, the entity needs to make a judgment as to whether it has any realistic possibility to continue or not. In case the entity determines it has no realistic alternative of continuing the business, preparation of financial statements for 2024-25 and thereafter on going concern basis may not be appropriate. In the plant of PQR Limited, there was a fire on 10th May 2021 in which the entire plant was damaged and the loss of rupees 40 lakhs is estimated. The claim with the insurance company has been filed and a recovery of 27 lakhs is expected. The financial statements for the year ending 31st March 2021 were approved by the board of directors on 12th June 2021. Show how will it be disclosed. Your balance sheet date is 31st March 2021. The fire is occurring on 10th May 2021. And the finalization and the approval is happening on 12th June 2021. This is indeed an event after the reporting period. Were the circumstances that led to the event existing on the reporting date? What is the event? A fire has broken out. Were the circumstances that has resulted into the fire on 10th May existing on balance sheet date? Obviously, no. You know, if this question you answer is yes, then obviously the very next question will be, why did you allow the fire to happen? If you were knowing on 31st March on 10th May, a major fire will occur and your entire plant will be destroyed. Did you not take any steps to prevent that fire? It's very clear that the circumstances that have resulted into this particular event were definitely not prevailing on the balance sheet date. That means this is a non-adjusting event. If it is a non-adjusting event, I do not have to restate the financial statements. But we should also understand the gravity of the situation. They are saying a fire has broken down. Right, a fire has broken down in which the entire plant was damaged entire plant okay the loss is huge entire plant has been destroyed agreed it was insured and you will get 27 lakhs and all all that is fine but do you have a realistic option of reviving your business once the necessary money is received from the uh, from the insurance company are you going to rebuild the entire plant and again enter into this business are you really going to do it so or you have no other option but to close down your operations. If you come to the conclusion that you will have to close down your operations, then the going concern assumption is no longer valid. And if the going concern assumption is no longer valid, then the financial statements have to be prepared on a different basis. The normal basis that you are following cannot be followed anymore.
with regard to going concern basis followed for preparation of financial statements the company needs to determine whether it is appropriate to prepare the financial statements on go going concern basis since there is only one plant which has been damaged due to the fire if the effect of the deterioration in the operating results and financial position is so pervasive that management determines after the reporting period either that it intends to liquidate the entity or to cease trading or that it has no realistic alternative but to do so preparation of the financial statements for the financial year 2000 2021 on going concern assumption may not be appropriate right the going concern basis is becoming inappropriate over here in that case the financial statements may have to be prepared on a basis other than going concern other than going concern maybe you may prepare it on liquidation basis right however it's also possible that the management may come to an end that nothing doing we will revive the business and continue then it is a non-adjusting event understand however if the going concern assumption is considered to be appropriate even after the fire no adjustment is required in the financial statements for the year ended 31st march 2021 if the going concern principle is still valid then the circumstances that led to the fire were not prevailing on the balance sheet date treat it as a non-adjusting event although it is not given in the response but if it is a non-adjusting event you should provide appropriate disclosures in notes to accounts suggest treatment for following events after the reporting period abc limited is trading in laptops on 31st March 2022, the company has 50 laptops uh, which were purchased at Rs 45,000 each. The company has considered the same price for calculation of closing inventory valuation. On 15th April 2022, advanced version of the same series of laptops is introduced in the market. Therefore, the price of the current laptops crashes to Rs 35,000 each. The financial statements for 2021-22 were approved by the board of directors on 15th may 2022 the company does not want to value the stock at 35000 less estimated cost necessary to make the sell as the event of reduction in the selling price took place after 31st march 2022 and the reduced prices were not applicable as on 31st march 2022 comment Your balance sheet date is 31st March 2022 and this event of some new advanced laptops getting introduced in the market is on 15th April 2022 and on 15th May 2022 our financial statements are getting approved. Thus 15th April 2022 is definitely an event after the reporting period is this event adjusting is this event non-adjusting that is what we have to decide right the company has taken a position you can see towards the end of the case they are saying that the company has taken a position that we don't want to value the stock at thirty-five thousand. what they are saying is that this is an event that happened after the balance sheet date and hence it's not applicable to that extent they are wrong if this event is adjusting event it will definitely affect the stock valuation Another thing that they are saying that these reduced prices were not applicable on 31st March 2022. When you are doing valuation of inventory on 31st March 2022, the main NDS that has to be applied is NDS2. NDS2 wants you to value the inventory at lower of cost or NRV. Cost is very clear, 45,000. And you have used the same for the purpose of the determination of the value of inventory. You have not considered NRV on the balance sheet date or maybe you have considered the NRV but then NRV was higher at that time. See in a business activity that is what is natural. Your NRV will always turn out to be higher than the cost only then the, pro uh, only then the business will be profitable. Isn't it? So that's the reason you have selected 45,000 there is no problem with that. But on 15th April, your competitors seem to have introduced an advanced version of laptop because of which your laptops have lost market and hence the selling prices crashed to 35,000. Question is, is this particular event giving you more information about facts and circumstances that were prevailing on the reporting date?
or as we put it down right as we put it down this is the question that we should ask ourselves were the circumstances that led to the event existing on the reporting date what is the event over here a new version of laptops has been introduced in the market it has been introduced on 15th april were these circumstances existing on the reporting date if you are of the view that the year ended on 31st march 2022 right and on 1st april 2022 your competitor started uh, developing a new technology and by 14th april the new technology was developed and on 15th april an advanced version of laptop was introduced don't you feel you are thinking or rather i'll say you are assuming too much if you are of the view that the year ended and after that all of a sudden out of the blue a new technology got developed that is not so your competitors were carrying out research and development also on the balance sheet date okay they were doing it also on the balance sheet date you were not knowing that very soon an advanced version of laptop will be introduced by your competitors in the market this event is giving you more information about facts and circumstances prevailing on the reporting date tell me what is the nature of the event is it adjusting or non adjusting of course it's an adjusting event and if it is an adjusting event you should consider the 35000 now less whatever costs which are necessary to complete the sale hence that's how you will work out the nrv then the nrv will be compared with the cost cost in any case is higher your laptops will get valued at the nrv right subsequent sales normally give you evidence about nrv which was prevailing on the reporting date <clears throat> that's your response as per india stain the decrease in the net realizable value of the stock after the reporting period should normally be considered as an adjusting event A limited was required to pay penalty for a breach in the performance of a contract. A limited believed that penalty was payable at a lower amount than the amount demanded by the other party. A limited created provision for the penalty but also approached the arbitrator with a submission that the case may be dismissed with costs. There seems to be some uh, what we can say uh, dispute going on between you and some another party. Uh, you are of the view that some penalty will be payable accordingly you have recognized a provision your provision is less than the amount demanded by the aggrieved party but you also approached an arbitrator and you are requesting the arbitrator that please dis uh, dismiss this particular case with cost with cost means if the case really gets dismissed then whatever expenses that you had to incur to defend yourself those expenses will be also reimbursed by the other party okay let's look at the main part of the question now a limited prepared the financial statements for the year 2021-22 balance sheet date is 31st march 22 uh, which were approved in july 22 okay they were approved in july 2022 they have not given us exact date the arbitrator in june 2022 that's an event occurring after the reporting period awarded the case in favor of a limited just look at it you had already recognized a provision for the penalty payable because you are of the view that some penalty will be payable but to your surprise you have won this particular case tell me what should we do with that provision okay that of course will be one of the question and then they say as a result of the award the provision earlier made by a limited was required to be reduced the arbitrator also decided that the cost of the case should be borne by the other party not only are you winning this particular case not only that you are also going to be reimbursed by the other party for the cost that you have incurred right you have won the case won the case in a sense it's not that no penalty is payable anymore you have won the case in a sense that the lower amount of penalty is payable 
That's the first question. Is A limited required to remeasure the provision? Is A limited required to remeasure the provision? What do you say? Was the lawsuit existing on the reporting date? Answer is yes. Were you knowing on the reporting date that some penalty will be payable? Answer is yes. You are now supposed to pay lower penalty. Isn't this giving you information about circumstances prevailing on the reporting date? I believe the answer everywhere is turning out to be yes. Can you remeasure the provision? Of course you can remeasure the provision. You will apply NDS 10, treat this as an adjusting event and you can reduce the provision. Don't worry, right? Events after the reporting period can even be favorable events. This is a favorable event for us, right? Is a limited required to remeasure the provision? Our answer will be yes. Did it? The conditions were existing at the end of the reporting date because a limited approached the arbitrator before the end of the reporting period. Therefore, it is an adjusting event. Accordingly, the measurement of the provision is required to be adjusted for the event occurring after the reporting period. Great. But then there's still one more question. Uh, this other question is with respect to what about the cost that we are going to recover from the other party. They say, what would be the treatment of cost that will be recovered by A limited, uh, which has been charged to the statement of profit and loss as an expense for the year 2021-22? See, I must be incurring legal expenses. So I might be paying the lawyer's fees that must be getting debited. A lot of documentation is required to be done. That is another expense that I'm incurring. All these expenses have got debited to the profit and loss account for the year ended 31st March 2022. In, uh, sorry, in June 2022, it has become clear that cost shall be, right, whatever cost you have debited to the p and cost shall be recovered. I will be able to recover this particular cost. Now, the condition that whether the cost will be recovered, that was not really prevailing on 31st March 2022. Understand? On 31st March 2022, what was known is that you may have to pay some penalty. Of course, we appealed to the arbitrator that why don't you dismiss this case and with cost. Agreed. But it is in June 2022 that we have gone the, uh, we have obtained the award of this particular case. Now we will be able to recover this particular expense. So cost shall be recovered. Agreed. But as far as the year 2021-22 is considered, right? The year which has just ended. As far as the year 2021-22 is considered, we will consider this as a contingent asset. Please understand, we will treat it as contingent asset. On 31st March 2022, we were of the view, we were hopeful that it may be dismissed with cost, but we were not 100% sure on the balance sheet date. The best thing that you can do is you can show this as a contingent asset because this is nothing but an inflow of resources, which is probable. Probable inflow of resources is considered to be a contingent asset. Contingent assets, as we know, are covered by NDS 37. And NDS 37 says that contingent assets should be disclosed. You can recognize contingent asset in your books only when the collection becomes virtually certain. Okay, when the realization of the contingent asset becomes virtually certain, only then it can be recognized in books. And NDS 37 says that whenever the virtual certainty of its collection is established in that period, you can recognize revenue out of it. So NDS 37 will become applicable here. Although you know in June, you know, this is what is happening. Although in June, you know that cost will be now recovered, but virtual certainty was established in which year? Virtual certainty of collection got established in June 2022. That means it has got established in the year 2022-23. So what will happen is it is in the next year that you will be able to report this as an item that you are going to collect.
recovery of the cost by ale emitter from the other party was a contingent asset as at the end of the reporting period. As per India's 37, a contingent asset should be recognized in the financial statements of the period in which the realization of the asset becomes virtually certain. India's 37 has made it very clear. You have to recognize it only when it becomes virtually certain and in the period in which it becomes virtually certain. In the instant case, the recovery of the cost became certain when the arbitrator decided the award during 2022-23. Accordingly, the recovery of cost should be recognized in the financial year 2022-23. What shall we do? In financial statements for the year 2021-22, disclose this as a contingent asset. Okay. And in the year 2022-23, you can credit it to your profit and loss account as a recovery of cost from the other party. A company manufacturing and supplying process control equipments is entitled to duty drawback if it exceeds its turnover above a specified limit. To claim the duty drawback, the company needs to file application within 15 days of meeting the specified turnover. If application is not filed within stipulated time, the department has discretionary power of giving duty drawback credit. You are manufacturing and supplying certain equipments and you are entitled to certain duty drawback benefits provided your turnover is exceeding a certain limit. And this is an important condition over here. If you want this duty drawback, then your turnover is exceeding a certain limit within 15 days. You are supposed to make an application. If you fail to do it so, that does not mean that duty drawback may not be available. It can still be available. But the department has discretionary power. Discretionary power means now it is no longer within your control. If the department decides, then you will get the drawback. If the department decides otherwise, you will not get the drawback. Okay. <coughs> so keeping this thing as a background, we understand the main question. They are saying for the year 2021-22. The company has exceeded the specified limit of turnover by the end of the reporting period, but the application for the duty drawback is filed on April 20, 2022. Right, the year has ended on 31st March 22. You should have filed your application within 15 days. Instead, you have filed it on 20th April 2022. You missed out the date. That means now duty drawback is discretionary. You are at the mercy of the department now, right? That is how I can put it down. Which is after the stipulated 15 days of meeting the turnover condition. Yes, duty drawback has been credited by the department on 28th June. Okay, the department has been kind enough and on 28th June 2022, they have given you the duty uh, drawback. And then they say the financial statements were approved on 26 July. Okay, 26 July 2022. These are the different dates that we will have to really consider this time. I am preparing my financial statements on 31st March 2022. I missed the deadline and on 20th April 2022, I am applying for duty drawback. I know very well that duty drawback is now within the discretionary power. In other words, I may get it, I may not get it. It means that there is going to be a probable inflow of resources, a probable inflow of resources as per India's 37 shall become a contingent asset. In other words, on 31st March 2022 balance sheet, the duty drawback which may or may not be available, right? It is representing a contingent asset and it should be accordingly disclosed in our financial statements. Finally, on 28th June, okay, finally on 28th June, you are getting the duty drawback. This is happening 
after the reporting period but before the approval of financial statements right agreed you are now getting the duty drawback and now it has become certain that you will be able to claim the duty drawback the realization of the contingent asset has now become virtually certain now it is an actual asset and if it is an actual asset accordingly it can be reported in my financial statements but india's 37 says that a contingent asset can be recognized as an actual asset in the period in which its realization becomes virtually certain realization is becoming virtually certain not in the year 2021-22 but in the year 2022-23 they are saying whether duty drawback credit should be treated as an adjusting event our answer will be no it cannot be treated as an adjusting event because it's a contingent asset and contingent asset is covered by india's 37 now i can't apply india's 10 over there I'll have to go through the requirements of India's 37. Let's read the response. In the instant case, the condition of exceeding the specified turnover was met at the end of the reporting period. And the company was entitled for the duty drawback, but the application for the same has been filed after the stipulated time, right? We missed the deadline. Therefore, credit of duty drawback is discretionary. Discretionary, you may get it, you may not get it. Discretionary in the hands of the department. If the department wishes, it will give you the credit. If it wishes not, it will not give you the credit. Most of the times, we will give you the credit. Accordingly, the duty drawback credit is a contingent asset as at the end of the reporting period, which may be realized if the department credits the same. That's what is happening here. The inflow of resources is probable. Probable means probability is more than 50%. As per the India's 37, a contingent asset should be recognized in the financial statements of the period in which the realization of the asset becomes virtually certain and more important is in the period in which the realization will become virtually certain in accordance with the above the duty drawback credit uh, which has contingent asset for the financial year 2021-22 should be recognized as asset and related income should be recognized in the reporting period in which the change occurs that is in the financial year 2022-23 Okay, in the current year, you will be showing it as a contingent asset. Showing means you will be disclosing it in your notes. And in the next year, you will be able to show it as an asset. And whatever income that is getting generated, that will also be shown in the next year. That is financial year XYZ Limited sells goods to its customers with a promise to give discount of 5% on the least price of the goods provided that the payments are received from the customer within 15 days. Okay. XYZ Limited sold goods of rupees 5 lakhs to ABC Limited between 17th March 2022 and 31st March 2022. ABC Limited paid the dues by 15th April 2022. With respect to the sales made between 17th March 2022 and 31st March 2022, financial statements were approved for issue by the board on 31st May 2022. State whether discount will be adjusted from the sales at the end of the reporting period. Okay. Our reporting date is 31st March 2022. We are suggesting to our clients that see if you are making payments within 15 days, then we are ready to give you 5% discount on the least price. We are planning to provide a discount. And then certain goods have been sold from 17th March 2022 to 31st March 2022. And the client who has purchased the goods from us is making the payment by 15th April, right? The payment is made by 15th April 2022. And our books are getting, or our financial statements rather I'll say, are getting approved on 31st May 2022. This is definitely an event 
after the reporting period is it adjusting is it non adjusting what is the event you have to provide a discount were the circumstances that you will have to provide the discount existing on the reporting date simple question what are the circumstances existing on the reporting date on the reporting date you had already sold goods to the client and you had already made it clear to the client that see if you make payment within 15 days i will give you five percent discount in other words the discount was already promised on the reporting date 15th april when the client is making the payment it is confirmed indeed that the client is availing this discount don't you feel it is an adjusting event right and if it is an adjusting event then an appropriate adjustment for the discount should be given for the financial statements prepared up to 31st march 2022 In the instant case, the condition that sales have been made exists at the end of the reporting period and the receipt of the payment within 15 days time after the end of the reporting period and before the approval of the financial statement confirms that the discount is to be provided on those sales. Therefore, it is an adjusting event. Accordingly, XYZ Limited should adjust the sales made to ABC Limited with respect to discount of 5% on the list price of the goods. That's what we were saying. It's an adjusting event. Yes, so a very interesting uh, question now. Whether a fraud related to 2122 discovered after the end of the reporting period, but before the date of approval of financial statements for 2023-24 is an adjusting event. Financial statements are for 2023-24. That means our reporting date is 31st March 2024. Then there is some date of approval which they have not given. And in between this, fraud is detected. And this fraud that has been detected is for financial year 2021-22. Okay. Is this an adjusting event? Ask the question. I'll again show you that. In case if you have forgotten the question. This is the question that you should ask. Were the circumstances that led to the event existing on the reporting date? Reporting date is 31st March 2024. Was the fraud, conditions of fraud existing on the reporting date? Fraud is of, you know, two years back, right? Fraud is of two years back. Obviously, it has still not been discovered. It has still not been detected. But the fraud was going on as a fact on the reporting date. I believe the answer is very clear. It is nothing but, it is nothing but an adjusting event. Right. And not only that, even NDS 8 can also be applied over here because frauds are normally considered as prior period errors. So accordingly, you may give the effect. In the instant case, the fraud is discovered after the end of the reporting period 2020-24, which is relating to the financial year 2021-22. Since the fraud has taken place before the end of the reporting period, the condition was existing which was been confirmed by its detection after the end of the reporting period, but before the approval of financial statements. Therefore, it is an adjusting event. Such a discovery of fraud should be accounted for in accordance with NDS 8 if it meets the definition of a prior period error. First question is, is it an adjusting event? Answer is yes. This answer is yes as per NDS 10. Now, how should its effect be given? Now, that is not given in NDS 10. How it a fact should be given is a subject matter of int is it. X Limited was having investment in form of equity shares in another company as at the end of the reporting period. 
that is 31st March 2022. After the end of the reporting period, but before the approval of financial statement, it has been found that value of investment was fraudulently inv uh, inflated by committing a computation error. Whether such event should be adjusted in the financial statements for the year 2021-22. In your balance sheet on 31st March 2022, you must be showing investment in this other company and you are showing it at a particular value which you have computed on 31st March 2022. Before the approval of the financial statements, you have realized that the investment value was fraudulently inflated because of a computational error. When was this fraud committed? The fraud was committed on the reporting date, right? The circumstances that led to the event were prevailing on the reporting date, isn't it? What is the event that has occurred after the reporting date? You have discovered, you have discovered that the value of your investment has been fraudulently inflated, okay? When was this fraudulently inflated? On your reporting date. This discovery of the fraud is giving you further evidence of the circumstances that were prevailing on the reporting date. It is indeed an adjusting event. You should revisit the entire valuation and whatever new value you are getting, the investment should be reduced to that new value. Since it has been detected that a fraud has been made by, a, by committing an intentional error and a result of the same financial statements present an incorrect picture, which has been detected before the end of the reporting period, but before the approval of the financial statements. The same is an adjusting event. Accordingly, the value of investment in the financial statement should be adjusted for the fraudulent error, uh, for the fraudulent error in the computation of the value of investments. It's an adjusting event and accordingly the value of the investment should be changed. Suggest treatment for following events after the reporting period. ABC Limited received a demand notice on 15 June 2021 for an additional amount of rupees 28 lakhs from the excise department on account of higher excise duty levied by the excise department compared to the rate at which the company was creating provision and depositing the same. The financial statements for the year 2020-21 are approved on 10th August 2021. In July 2021, the company has appealed against the demand of rupees 28 lakhs and the company has expected that the demand would be settled at 15 lakhs only. Okay. The year is 2021. That means my reporting date is 31st March 2021. On 15th June 2021, we are getting a demand notice. 15th June 2021, we are getting a notice from the excise department that you will have to pay 28 lakhs. Right? Extra or rather extra, we'll say additional. Additional 28 lakhs of excise duty will be payable. Okay, we are appealing against the demand and we are doing this in July 2021. In July 2021, we are filing an appeal and we are expecting that the demand will be settled at 15 lakhs. Okay, we are of the view that instead of 28 lakhs, we will have to pay 15 lakhs. And on 10th August 2021, your financial statements are getting approved. This is the timeline of the question. They are saying show how the above event will be will have a bearing on the financial statements for the year 2020-21, whether these events are adjusting or non-adjusting events and explain the treatment accordingly. Okay. Is it adjusting or non-adjusting? Basically, that is the question. Okay. What do you say? Adjusting? Non-adjusting. <laughs> I am taking you to the question. This is the question that you should ask yourself. Were the circumstances that led to the event existing on the reporting date? Ask yourself, what is the event? What is the event? Event is that you are getting a notice from the excise department 
and they are demanding another 28 lakhs of rupees of excise duty. We know excise duty is a duty on manufacture. When were these goods manufactured? That's the question. When were these goods manufactured? Were these goods manufactured after the reporting date or were these goods manufactured up to the reporting date? Okay. This is what you should really ask yourself over here. What do you say? They are saying ABC Limited received a demand notice. I'm again reading the question. Demand notice, additional amount of higher excise duty. <clears throat> and we have already been calculating excise duty at a particular rate. The excise department feels that no, this is not the rate applicable. This higher rate is applicable. This is very common in uh, this is a very common excise dispute which keeps on occurring. You may go for a particular classification, excise department may think of another classification and accordingly the rates may differ. But you are getting this particular notice definitely for goods that you have already manufactured. That one thing is very clear. Only after the manufacture gets completed that you are liable to pay the excise duty. Till then you are not liable to pay the excise duty. Excise duty is a duty on manufacture. It seems that this particular excise duty demand is for goods already manufactured before the reporting date. If the goods were manufactured before the reporting date, then the circumstances that led to the event were definitely existing on the reporting date. And if the circumstances were existing on the reporting date, this is nothing but an adjusting event. If it is an adjusting event, you should appropriately provide for the additional excise duty that you will be found liable to pay. Now, excise department is demanding that you will have to pay 28 lakhs of rupees. We are of the view that we will have to pay only 15 lakhs of rupees. We will recognize in our books a provision for the best estimate of excise duty that we may have to pay. Since we feel we will have to pay 15 lakhs, we will recognize a provision only for 15 lakhs. Let's see the response. In the instant case, demand notice has been received on 15 June 2021, which is between the end of the reporting period and the date of approval of the financial statements. Therefore, it is an event after the reporting period. Okay. This demand for additional amount has been raised in respect of goods already manufactured. I told you, excise duty can be demanded only when the manufacturer has got completed. And that's the reason we can say that the condition is existing on 31st March 2021. You seem to have done a wrong classification. If you are yourself agreeing that I'll have to pay 15 lakhs, that means you are admitting that you have done a wrong classification. And if you have done a wrong classification, then the demand notice of the excise department is giving you better information about facts and circumstances that were prevailing on the reporting date. Therefore, it is an adjusting event. Accordingly, the company should make a provision in the financial statements for the year 2020-21 at the best estimate of expenditure to be incurred, which is turning out to be 15 lakhs. While preparing its financial statements for the year ended 31st March 2022, a company made a general provision of bed debts at 5% of its debtors. In the last week of February 2022, a debtor of rupees 2 lakhs had suffered heavy loss due to an earthquake, the loss which was not covered by any insurance policy. Considering the event of earthquake, the company made a provision of 50% of the amount receivable from the data, apart from the general provision of 5% on the remaining debtors. In April 2022, the data became bankrupt. Can the company provide for the full loss arising out of insolvency of the data in the financial statements for the year ended 31st March 2022? I believe this is one of the examples that we had discussed earlier, isn't it? Uh, your reporting date is 31st March 2022. Okay. In April 2022, the data became 
bankrupt in April 2022 the event occurred and when are we finalizing the books have they given us any date uh, they are saying can the company provide for okay uh, approval date is not given but we are assuming that the financial statements are still not approved it's very natural year has just ended and this event has occurred in April what is the event that has occurred in April 2022 in April 2022, the dater became bankrupt. Question is why? Why did the bank, uh, why did the uh, dater become bankrupt? The dater became bankrupt because of an earthquake. Okay, the dater became bankrupt because of an earthquake. And when did this earthquake occur? Earthquake occurred in February 2022. Okay, the earthquake occurred in February 2022. We were aware about this. Now, our policy is that when the year ends, we are providing for bad and doubtful debts at 5% on all the data. So that we have already done. Then we realized that because of earthquake, our data has suffered heavy losses. Now, we feel that this 2 lakhs perhaps will not be recoverable. Hence, we have ourselves made a provision of 50% for that particular data. 2 lakhs was to be recovered. 1 lakh is already provided as a provision for bad and doubtful debts but now we realize that the data has become bankrupt that means the remaining 50 percent also will not be recoverable i want to increase the provision for bad and doubtful debts for also the remaining 50 percent can i do it so that is the question Is it an adjusting event or is it a non-adjusting event? That is what will decide the entire thing over here, isn't it? What do you say? Is it an adjusting event? Ask yourself, what is the event? Event is that the data has become bankrupt. Were the circumstances that will lead to the bankruptcy of the data existing on the reporting date? answer is yes because before the reporting date the earthquake had already occurred we were knowing that the, our data will face now certain financial problems and in cognizance of that we had already recognized a provision of 50 percent now we realize that remaining 50 percent also we will not get please go ahead and update the amount of the provision In the instant case, the earthquake took place before the end of the reporting period, that is in February 2022. Therefore, the condition exists at the end of the reporting date. Therefore, it is an adjusting event. Since provision for bad debts on account of amount due from that particular data was made at the rate of 50%, XYZ Limited should provide for the remaining amount as a consequence of declaration of this data as bankrupt. Then there is a slight variation which they have given away here. Slight variation. They say, would the answer be different if earthquake had taken place after 31st March 2022 and therefore XYZ Limited did not make any specific provision in contacts to that data and made only the general provision of weathers at 5% on the total data. Your year ended on 31st March 2022. In April 2022, the data became bankrupt. The data has become bankrupt because of loss caused by earthquake. But this earthquake has occurred. The earthquake has occurred. Obviously, the earthquake must have occurred sometime in April only. That is after the reporting date. Okay, what is the event? Data has become bankrupt. What are the circumstances that led to the event? Earthquake. Was the conditions of the bankruptcy prevailing on the reporting date answer will be no this time right answer will be no this time because earthquake did not occur before the reporting date earthquake has occurred after the reporting date that means the conditions which led to the bankruptcy of the data were not existing on the reporting date this will make it a non-adjusting event if it is a non-adjusting event, I will leave the provision of bad and doubtful debts at 5%. Even though I know that I will not be able to recover entire 2 lakhs of rupees from this particular data, still I will not update the provision for bad and doubtful debts. Bad and doubtful debt provision will remain unaffected. 
because it's a non-adjusting event. But for non-adjusting event, disclosure should be provided if it is material. If you are of the view that not collecting 2 lakhs of rupees from the data, if you are of the view that amount of 2 lakhs of bed debts is material, you should provide an appropriate disclosure in notes to financial statement. In case the earthquake had taken place after the end of the reporting period, that is after 31st March 2022, no condition existed at the end of the reporting period, therefore it is a non-adjusting event. If the amount of bed that is considered to be material, event of bankruptcy of the data should be disclosed along with the estimated financial effect of the same in the financial statement. I should provide a proper disclosure. XY Limited had taken a large site civil construction contract for a public sector undertaking valued at rupees 200 crores. Execution of the project started during 2021-22 and continued in the next financial year also. During the course of the execution of the work on 29th May 2022, the company found that while raising the foundation work that it had met a rocky surface and cost of the contract would go up by an extra rupees 50 crore, uh, which would not be recoverable from the contractee as per the terms of the contract. The company's financial year ended on 31st March 2022, and the financial statements were approved by the board of directors on 15 June 2022. How will you treat the above in the financial statements for the year ended 31st March 2022? My reporting date is 31st March 2022, 29th May 2022, the event occurs, that is rocky surface is discovered, right, and because of which our cost will increase by 50 crores and the approval is coming on. 15th June 2022. This is definitely an event that is occurring <coughs> after the reporting date, isn't it? So it is an event after the reporting date. Now all that we have to decide is whether it is adjusting or whether it is non-adjusting. If it is adjusting, then this extra 50 crores has to be accordingly be considered. If it is non-adjusting, 50 crores you consider as material, then I provide proper disclosure. What do you say? Adjusting event, non-adjusting event. This is the question. Never forget to ask this question. Okay. Were the circumstances that led to the event existing on the reporting date? Tell me what is the event? The project cost is increasing by rupees 50 crores because you are discovering a rocky surface. Ask yourself, was this rocky surface there on the reporting date? Sorry. Was this rocky surface there on the reporting date? Or on the reporting date, you know, see, you are doing a civil construction contract. In a civil construction contract, you have to lay down a foundation. So you have to dig, right? And you have to then lay down the pillars and foundations and all. You start that work and maybe at a certain depth, you realize that there is a rocky surface, which you had not originally anticipated. You had not originally anticipated a grid, but was the rocky surface already there on the reporting date? or the rocky surface was somewhere else, you know, in some other part of the town and it decided to travel underground and reach your site. <laughs> I hope you are trying to get what I'm, uh, 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 you are getting what I'm trying to suggest, right? 
you started your construction work at that time you were not knowing that you will meet a rocky surface but the rocky surface definitely was there right it was not traveling from some place to another and then decided to settle down at your site it was already there you were not knowing the discovery of the rocky surface is providing further evidence of the circumstances prevailing on the reporting date it means it is an adjusting event accordingly your cost inflation of 50 crores accordingly it should be accounted for right that's your response <clears throat> in the instant case the execution of work started during the financial year 2021 22 and the rocky surface was there at the end of the reporting period though the existence of rocky surface is confirmed after the end of the reporting period as a result of which it has become evident that the cost will escalate by 50 crores rocky surface was there but its detection was confirmed after the reporting period in accordance with the definition of events after the reporting period since the rocky surface was there the condition was existing at the end of the reporting period therefore it is an adjusting event the cost of the project and the profit should be accounted for accordingly right we are treating it as an adjusting event and the treatment of this additional crores uh, additional cost of rupees 50 crores that should be given in the current financial year itself There is an important carve out in India's 10. What is a carve out? We understand carve out as a difference between the India's and the corresponding IS or IFRS. We know India has decided to go for convergence. Our existing accounting standards have been converged with the IS and IFRS and accordingly we have designed our India's majority of the requirements of is and ifrs has already got accepted but there are certain places where the indas disagrees with the is or ifrs you know at some places we feel that the position taken by the is ifrs is not suitable for indian conditions and that is what is resulting into a difference between the indas and the corresponding is ifrs this difference is what we are popularly referring as a carve out Hence, there is a carve out in end AS10. Now, what exactly is this carve out? Let us assume that there is a long term loan arrangement. And because of the long term loan arrangement, as a person who has taken a loan, you will have to agree to certain terms and conditions of the financial institutions. It may be a bank or it may be any other financial institution. A loan obviously will be subject to certain covenants. Now it's possible that you may breach some covenant and because of that the loan may become immediately repayable. Subsequently this breach may be rectified. Whether the rectification of the breach after the reporting date but before the approval of financial statement. Whether it is adjusting event or non-adjusting event. That's where the end AS10 and IAS10 differ. IS10 consider it to be a non-adjusting event, while NDS10 is considering it to be an adjusting event. As you can see in our write-up, here is IS10, we will treat it as non-adjusting. Here we have NDS10 and we are going to treat it as an adjusting event. Let us understand this on the basis of a timeline and then things will become very clear. Let us take a case of a company, let's say ABC Limited. Okay. ABC Limited on 1st January 2021, let's say, arranges 15 year loan, arranges 15 year loan from SBI. Now, if it is a 15 year loan, then definitely this is a long term loan. If it is a long term loan, I will like to show this as a non current liability. Okay, now. On 20th March 2021, you receive notice from SBI. And the notice from SBI is repay loan immediately. Okay, this is the notice that we are getting from our bank. 
immediately come to the bank and repay the loan. Now, I will prepare my balance sheet on 31st March 21. On 31st March 21, status of loan, that will be the question. Should I show this loan as current liability or non-current liability? Think for yourself. On 1st January 2021, you have taken a 15-year loan. So this is a long-term loan arrangement. Naturally, I should classify this as non-current liability. But on 20th March 2021, it has become immediately repayable. That means it has now become a current liability. On 31st March 2021, I should report this loan as current liability. Okay, I should report this loan as current liability. And then on 5th April 2021, SBI revokes the notice, right? The earlier notice was to immediately repay it. Now SBI says that no need to repay it immediately. Repay it over the agreed tenure of 15 years. Okay. On 5th April 2021, what is happening? There is a rectification of the breach of some covenant. Should I treat this as adjusting event? Should I treat it as non-adjusting event? Okay. On 5th April 2021, the moment SBI revokes the notice, now the loan is no longer repayable. In other words, on 5th April 2021, the loan has again become non-current liability. But what really matters is the status of the loan on the balance sheet date. Because when I will prepare the balance sheet, that's the time when I will be disclosing or reporting the loan as current or non-current. On 31st March 2021, because of the notice on 20th March, it has become a current liability but on 5th april 2021 the moment the notice is revoked now the loan has become non-current liability if you say that the event which is occurring on 5th april 2021 is non-adjusting event non-adjusting event then i cannot change the status of the loan on 31st march 2021 i will have to continue to report the loan as i'll have to continue to report the loan as a current liability but the event that is happening on 5th April 2021, if you consider this to be an adjusting event, if it is an adjusting event, then what does that mean? If it's an adjusting event, that means I should change the status of the loan on 31st March 2021. It will not be reported as current liability. It will be reported as non-current liability. So this is the bone of contention which is there in NDS10 and IS10, both of them have taken a different position and accordingly the status of the loan shall be different whether you are following NDS10 or are you following IS10. So that's what we are discussing over here. We are saying there is rectification of breach of material provision of long-term loan and this has happened after reporting date you know after reporting date what is happening is it is non-adjusting okay it is non-adjusting here we say it is adjusting please understand this entire thing non adjusting it is non-adjusting under IS 10 okay when you will prepare your balance sheet on 31st March 2021 when you will prepare your balance sheet on 31st March 2021 if you are following IS 10 you will show the loan as current liability because they are saying it is non-adjusting but if you are following in DS10, in DS10 says that this rectification which has happened as an event after the reporting period shall be considered to be an adjusting event and because it will be treated as an adjusting event, the status of the loan will become non-current liability. Getting it? What NDS 10 suggests is that see the business relations in India between the corporates and the banks are well established. You only think about it. Let us say you are taking a loan on 1st January. You are mentally prepared that this loan will be paid over a period of 15 years. And on 20th March, out of the blue, you are getting this particular notice that, hey, come immediately and repay this particular loan. What will happen? 
Tell me, what is the action that you will take the moment you receive this particular notice? You will leave all the other work and you will rush to the bank. You will like to seek an appointment with the branch manager. We will really like to know that what exactly went wrong that now I have to immediately repay the loan. Once we get an audience with the branch manager, what we will do is we'll inquire. We will like to know that, see, this is the notice that I have received. I have taken a 15 year loan. Tell me what really has went wrong. Why am I supposed to immediately repay the loan? The branch manager will scrutinize the different documents and material, I mean, uh, whatever terms and conditions are there and will pinpoint us that this is exactly the issue. Let us say there were certain important documents which were to be submitted, which you have still not submitted and because of which the loan has become immediately repayable. What you will tell the branch manager is that you just give me four or five days, whatever documents are necessary, whatever formalities are required, I shall do all those formalities. And what you do is you immediately start doing all those formalities. Once the formalities are completed, the branch manager is satisfied and on 5th April 2021, as per our timeline, the branch manager is withdrawing the notice and now the loan is no longer repayable. All this thing is happening because of real good business relations which have developed between the bank and the corporates, isn't it? So that's the reason. India S10 takes this particular position. India S10 takes a position that see business relations in India are well developed. If there are any material, uh, if there is any breach of material provisions of long-term loan arrangements, the aggrieved party will try its level best to rectify that particular breach. If the bridge is rectified after the reporting date, but before the approval of the financial statements, we should treat it as a non-adjusting event. Agreed on 31st March 2021. Understand? Let us say you are reading the balance sheet. You are reading the balance sheet. Agreed on 31st March 2021, the status of the loan was current liability. Agreed. But when I'm reading the financial statements, which is much, much after 31st March 2021, Perhaps as a reader of financial statement, what is more important for me is what is the latest status of the loan? Think in that way. I'm, I'm talking about Indian conditions over here. Okay, Indian conditions. You get a copy of the annual report of the company. Of course, the balance sheet is on 31st March 2021. Tell me, by the time you are receiving the copy of the annual report, the loan has already become non-current liability. Will you not be interested in that? That what is the latest status? Status on 31st March 2021 definitely is a current liability, but perhaps what more matters to me is that it is a non-current liability. IAS 10, the International Accounting Standard 10, takes a stand over here that no only thing that matters is the status on 31st March, not the latest status. Perhaps both of them are right in their own way. If the balance sheet is on 31st March 2021, perhaps what matters the most is the status on 31st March 2021 and it is actually current liability. The position taken by International Accounting Standard 10. Or take the Indian viewpoint, what matters to be more is not what was the status on 31st March but the latest status. And the latest status is that it has actually become a non-current liability. Both of them have their pros and cons of course. But given the Indian conditions, perhaps this carve out was necessary. So if we go through the carve out, they say, as per IAS 10, rectification of any breach after the end of the reporting period is non-adjusting event. You can simply provide a disclosure. India S10 provides that where there is a breach of a material provision of a long-term loan arrangement on or before the end of the reporting period, with the effect that the liability becomes payable on demand. That means it becomes a current liability on the reporting date. If the lender before the approval of the financial statements for issue agrees to waive the breach, it shall be considered as an adjusting event. Before the financial statements are approved, the lender, the bank, the financial institution is revoking that notice, withdrawing that notice, is waiving the breach the consequence of which is that now the loan is no longer repayable on demand. That means it is no longer a current liability. We were treated as a non-adjusting event and we will change the status of the loan in our balance sheet from current liability to non-current liability. An entity enters into a loan arrangement with a banker and is subject to compliance with various covenants 
some are financial and some are non-financial covenants understand covenants as terms and conditions uh, the entity commits a breach of a covenant prior to the end of the reporting period as a result of such a breach as per the terms of the arrangement the loan becomes payable on demand if the loan has become payable on demand that means if you are preparing the balance sheet on the reporting date you should be showing this as a current liability assuming that as per the original terms the loan is payable after a period of 24 months if the loan is payable after 24 months then it is actually a non-current liability uh, date how should the liability be classified in the balance sheet current non-current if subsequent to the end of the reporting period but before approval of financial statement the banker has agreed not to demand the payment you have basically taken a loan for 24 months ideally it should be classified as non-current liability on the balance sheet date but just before the balance sheet date you have breached certain terms and conditions because of which the loan has become immediately payable hence the status of the loan on balance sheet date has become current liability but before you are approving the financial statements the bank has agreed that we will not demand immediate payment in other words the breach of the covenant has been rectified after the reporting date but before the approval of the financial statements we have already seen an important carve out with respect to this the carve out is very clear if the rectification of the breach of an important covenant of a long-term loan arrangement is rectified before the approval of the financial statements we will consider it as an adjusting event if you say it's an adjusting event that means the status of the loan on the balance sheet date will change from current liability to non-current liability NDS 10 provides that where there is a breach of a material provision of a long-term loan arrangement on or before the end of the reporting period with the effect that the liability becomes payable on demand on the reporting date if the lender before the approval of the financial statements for issue agrees to waive the breach it shall be considered as an adjusting event the loan shall be classified as non-current in case if you are answering this question on the basis of IAS 10 right this was the position taken by NDS 10 in case if you are answering this question on the basis of IAS 10 then this rectification of the breach of the covenant after the reporting date will be treated as a non-adjusting event in other words the status of the loan on the balance sheet date will continue to be current liability although you can provide a disclosure in notes to financial statements that after the reporting date the status of the loan has changed. Let us understand the treatment of dividends as per NDS 10. There are two possibilities over here. The first is the dividend is declared to holders of equity instruments. We are not using the words over here declared to holders of equity shares. We say equity instruments equity instruments its meaning has to be understood with context to india's relating to financial instruments india's 32 especially presentation equity shares of course will be classified as equity instrument but if a company has issued a preference share which is redeemable at the discretion of the management that same preference share will pay dividend but at the discretion of the management that means there is no committed cash outflow for that preference share. Even that preference share will also be classified as an equity instrument. If you are declaring dividend for such kinds of equity instruments, what shall be the treatment? Okay. The first possibility is that this particular dividend is declared during the reporting period. The reporting period has not ended. Before the end, you are paying dividend. This is what is popularly known as interim dividend. Any interim dividend that has been paid by the company, it will be shown as a distribution in your financial statement. You are paying dividend during the interim, uh, sorry, during the reporting period. We call that as interim dividend. Recognized as a distribution to equity shareholders in the financial statements. You will be preparing a statement of changes in equity. 
in statement of changes in equity, one column that will be prepared by you will be retained earnings. Okay, here you will be then showing an opening balance, opening balance, and under that you can say in trim dividend, right? In trim dividend, show that as a negative figure, show it as a distribution to your equity shareholders, right? Similarly, you can declare dividend after the end of the reporting period, popularly known as proposed dividend. Year has come to an end and then you are declaring dividend, of course, for the year that has just come to an end. That's your proposed dividend. For years and years in India, we have been creating a provision for proposed dividend. You know, normally it is understood as an adjustment. They will give you the P&L, you are supposed to finalize the financial statements of the company, they will give you the P&L and in adjustment they will say company has, uh, company has proposed dividend at so and so rate and then we recognize a provision for the proposed dividend. We are showing this as a liability. NDS 10 suggests that proposed dividend is not a liability. Okay, you have to treat proposed dividend as a non-adjusting event. It's not an adjusting event. Year has come to an end. Before the financial statements are approved, the management is proposing dividend. There is no liability on the part of the management to pay this particular dividend. Since the liability is not crystallized, where is the question of recognizing any provision? Please do not recognize any provision for proposed dividend. Treat it as a non-adjusting event. It is a non-adjusting event. You should provide disclosure in your notes. NDS 1 requires disclosure in respect of any proposed dividend. Do not recognize those dividends as a liability at the end of the reporting period because no obligation exists at that time. Such dividends are however disclosed in the notes in accordance to NDS 1. In other words, if you are having an equity instrument, for the equity instrument, you are paying any dividend during the reporting period. It's an interim dividend. Interim dividend will be shown as a distribution to the shareholders. If you are declaring any dividend after the end of the reporting period, popularly known in India as proposed dividend, you will not recognize any provision for proposed dividend. Simply a disclosure will be provided. India Stern rightly suggests that there is no crystallization of liability when the management proposes dividend. But as I said, preference shares can be classified as equity instrument, but classification of preference shares as equity instrument is going to be very rare. You are saying a company has issued a preference shares where the redemption is at the choice of the management, where the declaration of dividend is as the choice of the management. Basically, that preference share is as good as equity share. Normally, in preference shares, there is a committed payment of dividend. The moment you are committed to a payment of dividend, there is a contractual obligation of delivering cash. As per the NDS relating to financial instruments, it shall become a financial liability. The moment you say that preference shares are redeemable, the moment you say they are redeemable on a definite date or the date will be determinable in future, you are again creating a contractual obligation of delivering cash. These kinds of preference shares will become financial liability. But see, at the end of the day, they are preference shares and on preference shares, I will pay preference dividend. What should be the treatment of preference dividend that I'm paying for those preference shares which are classified as financial liability. Such kind of dividend is outside the scope of NDS 10. You have to apply NDS 32 itself over here. If you say preference share is a financial liability, then preference dividend is a financing cost. Just as you will debit interest of a bond, just as you will debit interest on a debenture, to your profit and loss account. Similarly, preference dividend will also be debited to the PNL. This preference dividend shall be charged as an expense in the statement of profit and loss. Again, let me tell you this treatment is not as per NDS 10 because it is outside the scope of NDS 10. This treatment is as per NDS 32.
declared to holders of preference shares classified as financial liability under India's 32. Such dividends are outside the scope of India's 10. Dividend payments to such preference shares are recognized as expense in the same way as interest on a bond. It shall be charged as a financing cost in the statement of profit and loss. You will not get any tax deduction with respect to it. That is another story. But ultimately, it is going to be treated as a financing cost. Suggest appropriate treatment of dividend. Okay. AVC Limited declares dividend on 15th July 2022 as the results of the year 2021-22 as well as the quarter one ending 30th June 2022 are better than expected. The financial statements of the company are approved on 28th July 2022 for the financial year ending 31st March 2022. Year is ending on 31st March 2022 and they are saying you are declaring dividend on 15th July. On 15th July 2022, we are declaring dividend for the year 2021-22, for the year ended. That means on 15th July, you are basically proposing dividend, right? There is a proposed dividend. This proposed dividend is for 2021-22. And you are approving the financial statements on 27th July 2022. This event on 15 July 2022 is definitely an event after the reporting date. Okay, whether it is adjusting or non-adjusting. Question is, will the dividend accounted for in the financial year 2022-23 or will it be accounted in the year 2021-22? You are proposing dividend for the year which has simply ended. The position of India S10 is that such kind of proposed dividend will be treated as non-adjusting event. There is no liability to pay this particular dividend. Okay. And similarly, the circumstances leading to the declaration of the dividend or the proposed uh, proposal of the dividend were not existing on the balance sheet date. Okay. And that is the reason it's a non-adjusting event. If it is a non-adjusting event, you can provide a disclosure in your notes. I like read. But the dividend will not be debited to the PNL of the year 2021-22. Dividend is declared on 15th July 2022. 15th July 2022 falls in the financial year 2022-23. Debit this to the year 2022-23. The dividend is declared in the year 2022-23. Therefore, the obligation towards dividend did not exist at the end of the reporting period, that is 31st March 2022. Therefore, it will be accounted in the year 2022-23 and not in 2021-2022. Even if the financial statements for 2021-22 were approved after the declaration of dividend, it will, however, be disclosed in notes in the financial statements in accordance to in days one. Current year financial statements disclosed in notes but consider it as a distribution of dividend in the next year. Although it is a dividend of the current year, but it will be accounted for in the year in which it is declared and paid. What would be the treatment of dividends declared to redeemable? Okay, redeemable preference shareholders after the reporting period, but before the financial statements are approved for issue for the year 2021-22, whether India then prescribes any accounting treatment for such dividends. Redeemable preference shares. I better assume that these redeemable preference shares are classified as financial liability under in days 32 if they are financial liability then the dividend that you are paying is a financing cost in other words these kinds of dividends are outside the scope of end as 10 and that is the reason uh, we will prescribe treatment as per india's 32 
just as you will treat interest on bond interest on debentures similarly treat in this preference dividend in other words it's a financing cost to be charged as an expense in statement of profit and loss NDS 10 does not prescribe accounting treatment for dividends declared to redeemable preference shareholders. As per principles of NDS 32 financial instruments presentation, a redeemable preference share, it should be a redeemable preference share is a financial liability. Thus, dividend payments to such preference shares are recognized as expense in the same way as interest on a bond. That is, it shall be charged as a financing cost in the statement of profit and loss. It is not necessary that dividend shall always be paid in cash. Dividend can also be paid in form of distribution of a non-cash asset amongst the owners of the entity. This is what we can refer as a non-cash dividend. How should non-cash dividend be treated? This is a subject matter of Appendix A to end AS 10. There are in total five points, five quick points that you should be clear with insofar as treatment of dividend in form of a distribution of a non-cash asset is considered. Let's see it very quickly. What are the points? As you can see, what we are discussing is treatment of distribution of a non-cash asset to owners covered by Appendix A to NDS 10. Yes, let's take up the first point over here. The appendix prescribes that liability to pay such dividend should be recognized when it is appropriately authorized and is no longer at the discretion of the entity. What it is trying to suggest is that the accounting entry relating to dividend payable in form of a non-cash asset, it should be recorded only once the dividend is authorized. By dividend getting authorized means the company now has no realistic option available other than the distribution of that particular asset. Now, when can we say that the dividend has got authorized? Yes, that's our second point over here. When can you say that the liability of the dividend has crystallized? This is the date, any one of the two dates. This is the date when declaration of dividend for example, by the management or the board of directors is approved by the relevant authority. Example, the shareholders, if the jurisdiction requires such approval. Whenever a company is declaring dividend, right? The dividend is basically declared by the management or the board of directors. Whenever the management or board of directors are declaring dividend, is that dividend required to be approved by the shareholders? If the answer is yes, the moment you are getting the approval of the shareholders, the dividend is authorized. Please go ahead and record an accounting entry for the dividend payable. You may say that such kind of authorization is not required. Okay, if the authorization is not required, the moment the dividend is declared by the management or the board of directors, go ahead and record an accounting entry for the dividend payable. That is the second one. When the dividend is declared, example, by the management or the board of directors, if the jurisdiction does not require further approval. First thing is you should be considering the dividend payable from the date the dividend is authorized. Second, dividend is authorized depending upon the jurisdiction in which the entity falls into. For the dividend declared by the management, do we require approval of the shareholders? If your answer is yes, the moment you get the approval from the shareholders, record the accounting entry for dividend payable. If your answer is no, that no such authorization is required, the moment the dividend is declared by the management or board of directors, you can record the accounting entry. The next question that arises is that, okay, the dividend has been authorized. Now I should record the accounting entry but by what amount should I record the accounting entry, isn't it? Okay, ask yourself, which is the asset that you are going to distribute by way of dividend? Let us say we have decided that we have a piece of land. The company is owning a piece of land. You have decided to distribute land 
as a non-cash asset amongst your owners. See, it is needless to say over here that such kind of non-cash dividends normally will be possible only in those companies which are having a limited number of shareholders. A publicly listed company having huge number of shareholders will find it difficult to distribute a non-cash asset. But let us say there is an entity which has only four shareholders. Think in this way. There is an entity which has only four shareholders and it has decided to distribute lend amongst those four shareholders in lieu of cash dividend. Okay. Now, as I said, the moment the dividend is authorized, I will record an accounting entry for the dividend payable. Question is, at what, account, uh, at what amount will I record the accounting entry? Identify which asset you are going to distribute by way of dividend. Find out what is its fair value. Okay, fair value of the asset to be distributed is your dividend liability. By that amount, record the accounting entry. That's our third point. The liability should be measured at the fair value of the asset to be distributed. You are going to distribute the lend. Find out what is the latest fair value of the lend. That will become the liability towards the dividend. Okay, let us assume for a moment that the fair value of the lend is 1 crore. That means your liability for the payment of dividend is also 1 crore. Now, you have determined the, uh, the liability of the dividend. However, as far as the lend is considered, it is still shown in the books at its carrying amount. I am showing the lend at its carrying amount only right now. Let us assume for a moment that the carrying amount is 30 lakhs of rupees. This lend was purchased in the past and we had purchased in the past for 30 lakhs of rupees. This lend will be treated as an investment property in your books. And because it's an investment property, I'm following the cost model of India's 40. And as per the cost model, I'm showing this lend at 30 lakhs of rupees. Its latest fair value is 1 crore. Because I will be distributing the land right now, the liability of the dividend will be the latest fair value of the asset to be distributed. But then this is causing a difference between the carrying amount of the asset and the carrying amount of the dividend payable. What to do with this difference? Yes, that's our point number four. Any difference between carrying amount of the asset distributed and the carrying amount of the dividend payable should be recognized in profit and loss when the entity settles the dividend payable when ultimately the dividend will be settled when ultimately that land will be distributed land which you are showing in your books at 30 lakhs and the dividend liability which is of one crore difference between these two will be recognized in profit and loss account when not when the dividend is declared it will be settled, the difference will be settled when the dividend is ultimately paid, ultimately settled amongst the shareholders. And finally, the last point over here, and of course, as the cliche goes, last but not the least, there are certain circumstances where this Appendix A will not be applicable. They say this appendix does not apply to a distribution of a non-cash asset that is ultimately controlled by the same party or parties before and after the distribution. If the party controlling the asset before the distribution and after the distribution is the same, then you cannot apply appendix A. How is that possible? Think of this kind of a situation. You have a company A Limited. It has a subsidiary B Limited. And B Limited owns, okay, B Limited owns Lend. And B Limited has decided that it will distribute this Lend. Okay, it will distribute Lend as dividend as dividend to the parent company the parent company is a limited a limited has a subsidiary b limited b limited is owning the land b limited is required to pay dividend b limited has decided that it will distribute land to its parent in lieu of cash dividend 
here appendix A to NDS 10 will not be applicable. Why? Please understand. Land is owned by B limited, agreed, but B limited is controlled by A limited. In other words, A limited is controlling this land. Okay, A limited is controlling this land through B limited. When B limited is transferring the right of ownership of the land to A limited, it ultimately makes no difference because land was controlled by A limited earlier before the distribution through the subsidiary. After distribution also, the land will be controlled by the parent. Okay. If the non-cash asset is going to be controlled by the same party or parties before and after the distribution, then in that particular event, Appendix A to India stand is not applicable. You should simply treat this as a distribution of asset or you can treat this as a sale of asset from the subsidiary to the parent. You cannot say this is distribution of non-cash dividend.